it's funny, I never used to think about the fact about loving myself. I just wasn't that guy. The thing about loving myself came when I had rock bottom. And I really had bottom, and it was a desperate attempt to save myself. I really fundamentally believe in the power of commitment and making commitments to yourself. You gotta keep them. And in this desperate moment, I've made this vow to myself. I was at bottom. My company had fallen apart. I lost everything. I was really sick. I was miserable. I was depressed. One morning or one night, it was dark. And I just got in my bed and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I'm either going to get out of this or die trying. And I walked over to my journal, grabbed my pen, and I wrote I knew I had to make the vow to myself to get out of this. I didn't know what. And I just sat down and I wrote, it was freehand. I vowed to love myself. 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 I vow to love myself. I vow to love myself. Where that came from, I had no idea. I still don't. It was a pure primal vow. It came from like a deep place of literally I was trying to save myself. When I realized that, what I'd done, I was like, okay, I don't know how to do that. You gotta figure out, because I made a commitment to myself, and a vow to yourself is a sacred act. You do that, you keep it, and life will change. And I had to figure out how to do it. I knew I had to work on my internal self. It wasn't about taking bubble baths. It's an internal thing. It's a mindset. It's a belief. It's a rock solid belief where your thoughts, your feelings, the emotions rise from. If they rise from there, then your life rises from there. Good morning. Welcome to the Poetry Studio 101. This morning, I went for a little different change of music. Um, I usually don't play music with vocals, but I was listening to this song earlier this morning. Uh, vow, my, I, I Vow to Love Myself. I cured the Dawn featuring Caval Ravikant. And I figured, I, I got inspired to write a poem, which I'm going to read at the beginning of the stream. Hence why I started the stream with this song. And it's all about, well, the poem itself is a little different because the poem kind of dips a little bit into themes of, you know, seeing the miracles of the world. Um, I woke up at um, 3.30 again this morning. I did this, I think, the same day last week where I just woke up early on one day because I just was so buzzing because of work and I just worked on stuff. And then I... Uh, with this, yeah, and so I just wrote a poem about it. Now we got a late start to the morning, so I'm thinking everybody that's might be tuning in a little late. Um, I think I see Steve in the in the in the lurking in the in the background, but this poem is entitled 5:57 a.m. I'm listening to Akira the Dawn. My wife is reviewing auditions for a Zoom Dear Evan Hansen. I vow. I vow to love myself. Make miracles of meaning in the beings around me. Welcome death, because I was preparing. Sending the emails, cleaning the desks, because that is all I have. I vow. I vow to love myself. I am the world. A world, the Campbell imagination made real across the waves of space and technology. I vow. I vow to take the demons by the hand, 
the shadow at dinner and learn, learn, learn fear and love. The titans in the newspaper, the oppression and the jetpacks launching us into stardom. And I write it in ink, I swear unto all holy text, I vow, I vow to love myself and the miracles surrounding, making the dark morning a supernova substance sent from the past, the future, and the present. That is 5.57 a.m. by Joseph M. Jablonski. Not polished in any sort of way, but just, you know, like there's, it, there's many different levels of in writing or writing inspiration. Um, sometimes I, you know, let's say I'm going to write on this topic and then I say, and then I write on the topic and it works. Um, some days I really have to work at writing it. I might have to write a little bit free verse and just kind of put myself out there and just work it, work it, work it, and then finally, like, start to actually write what I want to write and have, like, several pages of just BS before I start hitting what I really want to hit. And then there are these moments where, like, things shoot across the field of vision um, and you just need to write about them. Like, I, I was listening to the song, I was putting my shoes on me, I was getting ready to go for a run, and I sat up, I looked up, and I beelined into here. Got to the typewriter and wrote. I wasn't planning on doing that poem. No plan to do it. I just needed to write it. Like, it was just something I absolutely needed to do. So, there is kind of that. One of the cool things that happened yesterday is after the 100th stream was over, we raided... Uh, a Twitch writer, and I have now started to get to know, and I still have to actually like introduce myself on the Discord and everything, but I've started to get to know the Twitch writing community, which is absolutely incredible. I frankly didn't really think a lot about getting in touch with them, not because I didn't care, um, but because I had tried doing live writing before on Facebook a long time ago, and it worked out not well. I did just from my Facebook page. It was back when I was working on... I think I was still working on the novel at that point. I don't know. Uh, or I was working on something. It was a blog post. And it just didn't work for me. Like, I didn't enjoy it. And then, like, I didn't really... You know, I, knew, I checked out, like, a writer or two on Twitch when I came on. But, um... Oh, no! Stupid Twitch didn't auto-start. That happens. Um, <laughs> I'm just kind of talking about our raid yesterday and meeting Twitch writers and um, being able to kind of learn more about that community, the wider community that's out there. It's a cool thing. And I'm planning on hanging out in their chats more over the next week, getting to know a bit more of them and starting to kind of uh, be able to bop around and plan raids, and meet other writers. Yeah, his <laughs> his story was pretty grotesque, and I mean it in a good way. Like, it was, uh, it was a pretty good horror piece that this guy was working on. Um, Ashes of Authority, I think, is the name of the user that we raided. Uh, I can't believe I don't remember. Um, for those watching on the replay, we had our last, um, last stream was our 100th stream, and then we raided a writer. And Ashes of Authority was writing this pretty grotesque um horror alien scene it was great um just to be able to kind of read along and just be hanging out there seeing the creative forces in action um and i realized how similar it was to what i was doing uh and being able to do poetry here and be able to kind of create on that spot and do that and just kind of take it take stuff and one of the cool things that those writers were also using was they were using a software that allowed them to kind of gamify the writing process. Like it takes the, um, the word, you know, you write a certain amount of words and it turns it into an RPG. 
Um, and you get to, like, have a character that actually, like, does things in this RPG world. So it makes it a lot of fun to, to watch, and so there'll be a lot more interactions in the future with this channel. But in the meantime, we have poetry. More poetry, right? I didn't really plan this morning out. Uh, I don't... It was, I was feeling kind of, like, whatever about this morning. Like, I've been, I've been cranking on projects for the past few days, which is good. Um, but I'm thinking that if I'm going to write... There are a couple of topics that came up that were interesting. I think I want to write about Twitch writers, news about it, dissect it in a poem, kind of see what comes up. Really crank it. <laughs> yeah, a poet cranking is not really a, 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 a thing. I mean, like, poetry is not... I mean, it work in some ways. There's a lot of wordsmithing. It's, you know, you got to put a lot of ideas together, but, you know, you're playing with words. Let's get some of that nice background music on as I write about Twitch writers. Excuse me. What was also nice, um, hey, good morning, good morning, Leaky. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, I didn't see. I see that you have now followed. Thank you for the follow. Um, so it's so cool that you were able to 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 check out um, the stream yesterday. And thank you again for helping. It is because of you that I got introduced to the wider writing world of Twitch. I'm planning on hanging out in their Discord today and and being able to. Uh, learn more about what they're all about. Um, Leahy was the one, Steve, that gave the suggestion for where we were going yesterday, which was Ashes of Authority, if I remember. Um, and it seems like he hangs out on a lot of the... I saw him on a Twitch later on for the Lady Rights, and so we are... Um, I like that there's a kind of a campaign to get writing um, on Twitch. And what I'm going to be writing about today is, is about Twitch writers as, you know, just a poem. I'm going to poet, poetically muse it. Um, and I checked out your song after you posted it. Um, really cool, uh, really cool music that you've got going. Getting the typewriter camera ready. I hope that this um, this comes off as a compliment. It was like a better version of Pearl Jam. Like had a very Pearl Jam style, your music, but I, I liked it better. It had a more, you know, no more poetic lyrical flow. Does that, does that kind of make sense? <laughs> you're laughing, so I, it sounds like you're not offended. Um, I don't, I, I don't like necessarily making musical comparisons. Um, I once had a group of friends that was a worse version of Green Day. Uh, you can imagine that. Um, <laughs> but yours was a better version of Pearl Jam, in my opinion. If I had to make a comparison. Yeah. I didn't, I mean, I... I heard you sing on YouTube. I didn't. Um, no, I'm talking about the, um, the the one where I heard you sing. That was the one. Your your lyrics are something else entirely. I mean, your lyrics. You know, I don't. I don't really know. If Paul, poor Pearl Jam has a style of lyric, uh, so I wouldn't compare compare your lyrics to Pearl Jam. They were pretty. They were power. Just don't sing them right now. You are healing. Um, feel better from whatever it is that you're healing from. I don't even know. Um, Oh, 
is the song going to start? Yeah, leave it to leave it to the girlfriend for now. Thank you, Leaky. I'm glad you liked the title. Like I like how the actual content of the poem started. I mean, it's good. It's a good image, but I, it's still directionless. And I, I'm very comfortable with that when I do these spontaneous poems. The um, having things kind of start out and and maybe find their way later on. Leaky, do you know if there are a lot of other poets, or if you've seen anybody else with a typewriter on Twitch doing the typewriter writing thing? Seems like you know a lot of the people. Well, that's exciting. If you mean this morning, this is, it's every time, well, for me it's morning, I don't know where you're at, but for me, I do this every morning at this time. Um, except for Sundays. I have not gained followers on the raid, uh, Steve, but, well, except for Leaky, who just followed a couple minutes ago. Thank you again so much. But my, um, my thinking is that I'm, I, if I start really networking with the writing community at large, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be really good. So, yeah, I saw that. How did you find me, Leaky? Like, what was, uh, what was your, how did you wander into the stream? And I saw that you said that your writing comes closer to poems than novels. finding it. Is my typer to doing? Keyword search a lot. I think that's really good that you were able to look with that. Now, what would only be better, every one of my typewriters has a ribbon reverse issue. Are you ready to see this, Leaky? You're going to get a sneak peek at a 
Let me see if I can. There we go. You get to see the inside of the typewriter. I'm gonna fix it. The ribbon. This typewriter does not reverse its ribbon, which means that when it reaches the end, it does not. There we go, that's what I need. All right, just need a little bit. What type of typewriters did you own? I, lo I collect them, I have, um, if I said it, I have over 30 typewriters, would that sound weird? <laughs> it's a lot of typewriters, especially for a 1200 square foot apart apartment. Similes It has been over a decade since you have touched one. Yep, that was the time. Uh, let's see here. I gotta I just gotta delete this whole line. This is pretty messy for a morning poem, I'm going to say. Um, It's not really about watching writers, it's about writing in general. I mean, I could probably bring it back to writing about watching writers. I'm not really... I'm trying to think of what how I want to do this. If you're tuning in, um, I am writing a poem that's celebrating Twitch writers. Uh, the title of the poem was Watching Writers, but I don't know if we've ended up there. Um, but that is kind of where this is all gone.
you know, I should probably, um, I probably should, um, goodness gracious, uh, make a, make a list of words I gotta stop using in poems. Um, I use the word dreams way too much. I love writing about dreams. And it's not like specific stuff, like, oh, I was writing at a wedding, um, and I do this at weddings, and I started writing a bunch of poems about unlocking, and that was really cool. But the stuff that always shows up is, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I had to do that too. That's really good. It's good to know that I'm not alone on that. Dreams, humanity, uh, heart. Like, I get real, like, just crazy into those. Uh, I use break free way too much. That's, that's a new one. I don't use break free that often at all. That's so interesting. There must be something psychological about it. Like, why is it that I dwell on dreams? Why is it that you use break free too much? I mean, there's, there's reasons, obviously, but like, yeah, we as poets, we tend towards things, tend towards specific things. Um, most of the streamers, yeah, safety net, exactly. I'm sure that Steve, so, same thing with you um, and your music, that there's, um, there's probably some songs that you find yourself reaching to on a on a regular basis and there's but with me different with music because that ritual that repetition is kind of a uh, uh, it's more soothing uh than i think it is in poems where if i just keep writing poems about dreams i probably uh look like a weirdo um 100 in the bar not on twitch it's interesting um, yeah, well, the, I, and that's, Akira's talked about that too, where with the DJs in the bar, they'll, you know, people love hearing the same songs over and over. I think that's what you mean, right? Um, but on Twitch, it's a little more that you got to kind of mix it up a bit. Mm -hmm. Yep, so there we go. I, I've once again fallen, and I, my goal, because I know that, Steve, you've like literally engineered Streamlabs to be like this, this fantastic chatbot to, to manage everything. Um, you have a thing where there's a count uh, whenever Terry messes up, um, you know, something like where like the, the music messes up, you know, that Terry messed up blank amount of times. And I want to set it so that people can keep can track whenever I use the word dreams and have people just, you know, do something like that. Um, so I have to figure out. Yeah, yeah, it, we, we should chat over that. I, um, I just haven't gotten to, you know, this week's not going to be the week for me to be able to set up Streamlabs. Um, I haven't even been able to set up follow gifts yet. I got to do that. <laughs> yeah, like so that so that people can keep me accountable and, and they can and they can they can they can get, make me feel guilty when I use the wrong words and not wrong words. It's just um, it's the counting feature. I will definitely check that out. But the alliteration that this has allowed me is pretty impressive. Of the page. Well, I appreciate all your help, Disco, as it is. Um, I, I, I just, I really do appreciate everything that you're, you're doing um, for the community at large. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leaky, but I like the, I am in the just chatting, and so I love the conversation. I love making that conversation with anybody that pops in here. Uh, we, it's, it's, sometimes it's a big crowd, sometimes it's a small crowd, it's whatever it ends up turning into. Watching writers, or more like discovery is how I would to actually title this. Letters curving as paint strokes. Positioning the hieroglyph of ideas synthesizing into a story. Play on words. Writing the adventure. 
We watch the lines cross the screen. The click of the keyboard echoes like steps through Plato's cave. Running over bridges and burning behind our darlings as we chase the plot through the forest, the sky cityscape. Skyscrapers shine like tall type bars, sun a blinding blank page as we find the plinth, the page standing in the weeds, marking the story prophecy and discuss, debate our options, roll on chance that this tangent won't take us to a dead end. Fiber of the woodland, hear this supplication from the rambling scribe inside each of us. Make our symbols shine. Translate our confused dreams into dictionaries of discovery. Discover me making a world for you. That is... Untitled, a poem about writers. I'm just going to say it's a poem about writers. And I might try to edit this one out over a couple of streams. I believe it or not, I was working on trying to edit some stuff so that I actually could work on my real projects this morning. And I realized that, like, I, I still have trouble, like, organizing my projects and send my accordion folder. Um, thank you, Leaky. I uh, really appreciate you um, uh, being here and, and listening to the poem. Um, yeah, and what you were saying before was interesting, that you said that you come across a lot of writers that don't understand. Um, it's stuck on repeat. Hmm. Oh, I thought you were titling. I didn't read the rest of the chat. Um, I didn't... I thought you were titling my poem. Um, let me send you my email. If you ever want me to read your stuff on the stream, um, I know that you write songs, so it wouldn't really come off with the cadence that you would usually have it as. But I would be glad to feature your stuff on the stream. I'm planning on making it that every week I feature a different poet or writer that I like. Um... I've been basically reading this guy called Billy Collins every morning uh, just because I'm not, um, uh, what is it, uh, I'm not really like, it's just, it's, it's easy because I could turn to anything in Billy Collins and his stuff is good and easy to understand. Um, <laughs> actually like this one, I think I'm going to write, <laughs> I'm going to read this one. Um, yeah, so send me some, send me some stuff over email, um, or even if you wanted to try chatting it now, like you were chatting the stuff before, but if you send to me over email, you could send to me with the lines the way you like it, and then I could read it out on the stream. Um, I do practice with the reading, so it's one of those things that, um, I went, I believe it or not, Toastmasters helped me out a lot. I, I just turned to a poem in Billy Collins I want to share because it is it looks hilarious. <laughs> it's titled What She Said. When he told me he, is, he expected me to pay for dinner, I was like, give me a break. I, I was not the exact equivalent of give me a break. I was just similar to give me a break. As I said, I was like, give me a break. I would love to tell you how I was able to resemble give me a break without actually being identical to give me a break. But all that I can say is that I sensed a similarity between me and give me a break. And that was close enough at that point in the evening even if it meant I would fall short of standing up from the table and screaming, give me a break. For God's sake, will you please give me a break? No, for that moment, with the rain streaking the windows and the waiter approaching, 
I felt the most I could be was like, to a certain degree, give me a break. Like, give me a break. What She Said by Billy Collins. Up, oh, we have Leaky, you move fast. Um, let me see if I can open up my email on the phone. There we go. I have your email here. Who's giving it a read through? And what I will probably do is I will probably um, read it as poem, if that's something that uh, works for you, Leaky. So it would not be, yeah, uh, but so it wouldn't be like, back to you, you know, like I would, I would obviously make sure that I would, I would give it the cadence that it deserved as a poem. Um, yeah, I will read, so this morning, I will read Stuck on Repeat. And then uh, the next two mornings, I can read Gravity uh, and Heavy Flow. So if that works for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be reading the, um, the lyrics to the song Stuck on Repeat um, by learning through the insanity, I think would be the best way to uh, describe his it's his uh, YouTube channel, um, but also uh, on here as Leaky. So this is stuck on repeat. Shattered waves on the shore. I say I love you. You walk away as I wonder why. Unrequited, but I still love you. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't help but fall for you, trapped in that long goodbye. And I can't, I can't move on, stuck on repeat. So here we go again, shattered waves on the shore, and I say I love you. In my head, we begin to melt Took my hand as we merge, two souls colliding in one dead rose. Unrequited does it matter. I lie, I lie, I lie to myself, stuck on repeat. So here we go again, shattered waves on the shore I need no more, ripped at the seams. Lost memories, empty dreams, love ignites the madness inside. Unrequited tears fall down. Unrequited a drunken mess. Unrequited I need more. Unrequited a broken knife. The waves crash. My burning soul, stuck on repeat. I can't move on. I'm stuck on you. And that is, so is Dr. Lucas your, um, like your band name? Oh, I loved it. It was, this is powerful. Uh, the, 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 the waves and because, well, it's, it's so, um, <laughs> actually it was really interesting. Um, so Dr. Lucas is, um, is the author of Stuck on Repeat, song lyrics read as poetry. Um, PhD in physics. That's awesome. You got the science and you got the art together. That just works. Um, and it's interesting that you mentioned physics because of the waves and the repetitive motion of that. The cycle uh, of the energy that goes through that. It is... Um, it's like you took... Um, there's a famous poem... Um, that I can't remember the name of, 
Oh, goodness, it's going to kill me. Uh, I am going to look it up real quickly. Um, Do oh, it's Dover Beach. Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. Uh, so Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold is about uh, a the the rhythm of the waves kind of being this um, a, a despair at the repetition of the world. And the guy escapes or tries to escape that through love. But what's funny is you've taken the the repetition of the you know the 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 the, the banality of the repetition of the world and you've turned it into love you get the waves and like some of that unrequitedness and, and all of that it's powerful as a as a uh as a as an image as a as a you know and my my imagination goes to um you know obviously there's there were there was the ways that you broke down the song in terms of like you know uh stuck on repeat peep peep you know like you did that in the in the lyrics that i didn't read but I can imagine what your music does to kind of echo that. And it might be going faster, but it also could be kind of like the slow beat of those waves, you know? Uh, so I, I just, I think that's really, really cool. Well, we're going to save Gravity and Heavy Flow for tomorrow. It's so cool that, because basically you're going to be my first profiled poet. There, see, there we go. It's slow because the music matches the the um the rhythm of the image and i can imagine that that's uh sounds absolutely awesome so cool uh i am going to wrap it up there uh, actually you know what yeah i i i had a poem that i wanted to expand on no you know what i gotta i gotta do this <laughs> I have a thing I have to do. Excuse me. <laughs> Let me get my... I need to get an extra piece of paper. So, I have a poem that I have been tasked to edit by my... Um, I have a writing coach. Kind of like... I'm not saying that like I need a writing coach. It's more like that I just have someone that helps me through it. Um, St. Just Germany... Germany? wants to share a poem. Hello, St. Just Germany. Sorry I didn't catch you before when I was doing the reading and stuff like that. Um, yeah, if you want to share a poem, go ahead. Uh, if you want to send the link, I will, I can read it out on the screen. I don't, I don't care. Um, I, you know, it's, I could keep going on this for longer in the morning, and then I could take care of my what I will remember after that. Um, guidance is awesome. Yeah, and so it's funny because I never went, um, I never did a, what do you call it? Uh, I never, I've never done like an MFA program, but my friend has. He's a very good, very good guy. And so I get the benefits of learning what he learned through the MFA program without having to pay the money for an MFA program <laughs> and spend the time. It's from 1862, says St. Just Germany. Um, what is the name of the poem? Because then I could probably bring it up on my phone. And it's about our brain. Ooh. Using the brain as an image. I feel like that the brain as an image. Oh, there we go. Oh, this is um, Emily Dickinson, I think. Right? I could be wrong, but I believe this is Emily. Yes, it's Emily. Um, and then I have something funny to tell you about Emily Dickinson that I mentioned before on the, on the stream. But we are going to read this now from Emily Dickinson. It's about, I think, it's the brain is wider than the sky. The brain is wider than the sky. For put them side by side. The one and the other will... The one the other will contain with ease, and you, beside. The brain is deeper than the sea, for hold them, blue to blue. The one the other will absorb, as sponges, buckets do. The brain is just the weight of God, for heft them pound to pound, and they will differ if they do, 
as syllable from sound. I love it. The brain is wider than the sky. So what um, a friend of mine sent me, and this is the second time I brought this up on the stream. I think I, I think I brought this up. Um, I do agree on that, Leaky, that it, there's more that can be mined from that. Maybe someone needs to make like the fan fiction expansion of the brain is wider than the sky. I don't know, that'd be a cool idea. <laughs> I, um, so I had a friend, I'm bringing out, I'm opening my Discord right now because a friend of mine, and so if my get, video gets a little choppy, that's because my computer doesn't like me running multiple programs. Run, run, run. Um, my friend messaged me a long time ago, good friend of mine, and he told me about how um, here it is. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, give me a second here. So there's a tweet. Oh, did it disappear? Is it not there anymore? Oh, that's horrible. Or maybe this this is it. There we go. So, the common meter of Emily Dickinson poems, this is what I learned, the common meter of Emily Dickinson poems is, believe it or not, a common meter that's shared among many various works, um, because it is a very just common meter. One of the works that it shares is the Pokemon theme. So, St. Just Germany, if you know the Pokemon theme, I will be the very best that no one ever was, you can then look at any Emily Dickinson poem, or most of Emily Dickinson's poem, and you can sing it, and the meter will match. And it will absolutely destroy your mind. Because you're like, looking at these Emily Dickinson poems, and you're like, you know, the brain is, what was it? it was the, the brain is wider than the sky. For put them side by side. You know, like, right? Like, you see, it could go. I'm not going to sing the whole thing. Um, so that is something new that is going to jar you as you move forward. Um, uh, my favorite was, you know, um, I, 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 I stopped for death. I think it's like I kindly stopped for death. Um, and he did stop for me or something like that. Um, um, my cadence, I think, beats just slightly out of normal cadence. Yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, so that that is the, um, so anyway, that that's the thing with the Pokemon theme and Emily Dickinson. Yeah, and, and everybody's like, my rhythm is, that's a fantastic question. Um, <laughs> I stop for ten. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, well, that's another Emily Dickinson poem. Uh, it's, um. Where is it? Uh, have you ever heard that Emily Dickinson poem, uh, Steve, before? Um, it's, I couldn't stop for death, uh, actually, is the way. Because I could not stop for death. That, that was it. So um, I'm going to read that one, too. We're kind of just having an Emily Dickinson morning now. That's what I love about this stream. Um, Leaky like Sylvia Plath. We, we will have to eventually bring more Sylvia Plath into the stream. Reading poetry is something I've always wanted to do more of on here, but like I've have, you know, I haven't figured out how to integrate it, but like I'm really a big guy of whatever the chat wants to do, I'll kind of do. Um, except I think after this, I'm going to get to this poem, which is what I will remember, which is one of mine. So, Because I Could Not Stop for Death by Emily Dickinson is actually the title. Um, one day you will read us your favorite poet, A, by you, and B, not you. Um, what do you what do you mean by uh, A and B by you and B not you? I'm just I'm just confused by what you what you mean by that. But yeah, my favorite poem. Oh, it's just uh, it's just your 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 chat being fun, funny. Um, read us my favorite poem. Well, poem is tough. Like specific uh, poems are tough because like that's just you know uh, there's so many that I love poets themselves um, 
A, B, A written by you and B not written by you. I like that. When it comes to poems written by me, I don't know, that could get into some weird places. There's a lot of stuff that I'm really passionate about that's also really personal. Um, one of my older poems is this long-form work about how um, I struggled with um, I struggled with long distance in the style of William Wordsworth. And then poems not by me? Uh, William Wordsworth's Tintern Abbey is actually one of the favorites of mine. But I had his others that I like. Um, uh, so St. Just Germain has a quote about art, poetry, music. What science cannot declare, art can suggest. What art suggests silently, poetry speaks aloud. But what poetry fails to explain in words, music can express. I like that. I'm going to screenshot that. The physicist also draws, which is exciting. What do you not do? <laughs> Leaky. Well, right now you don't sing, unfortunately, but you will be singing soon, with 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 with, with help for your with help and hope for your recovery. Um, but that is that's cool that you do a lot. Uh, because I could not stop for death by Emily Dickinson. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves, and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too, for his civility. We passed the school where children strove at recess in the rain. We passed the fields of grazing grain. We passed the setting sun. Or rather, he passed us. The dews drew quivering and chill. For only gossamer, my gown, my tippet, only tool. We pa paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely, vi scarcely visible, a cornice in the ground. Since then, tis centuries, and yet feel shorter than the day. I first surmised a horse's heads were towards eternity. That is, because I could not stop for death. A classic. Fort just says that he can ride my motorcycles. Um... And I am going to make a note, Steve, that one of these days, read favorite poem by you and not by you. So to close out this stream, I have to expand on a poem that I've written previously. Now I, I was supposed to do this um, more uh, elegantly. Uh, Saint Just Germany says, do you know the German poet Goethe? Um, I do, but I know him from his philosophy side, uh, believe it or not, or his, more his scientific side. When I took a class on philosophy of science, we read his Metamorphosis of Plants. And I have a beautiful, like the textbook for the class was like 50 bucks for the small book. I was like, what is this? It's a beautiful, vibrant copy of the metamorphosis of plants with full high-resolution color photos of the plants he was talking about. Um, uh, he had a, a dispute with Newton, just like Leibniz. Oh, we can get into the philosopher disputes, but not here. Um, uh, yeah, so Leaky, so the, the, the bits... Um, I am working, I'm, I'm technically invited to affiliate, and then uh, Twitch messed up the onboarding info. Like, they just did not, 
I they I was putting my stuff in correctly to be affiliate on Twitch, and Twitch was like, no, it's not working, and I was like, yes, it's working, and they were like, no, it's not working, and then this morning, I think it's magically fixing itself. So I'm not yet officially in on affiliate, but it's going to happen. So save your bits. Hey, Claire. Welcome to the stream. I am about to write an expansion on a poem about the pandemic. This poem uh, was a fragment that I kind of wrote the way that my writing mentor described it. And we're going for the long stream today because I got to do this anyway. Um, they did that with me and it was my area code. I had to put a space in one form and not in the other. See, like, it's insane. The, the, the forms for Twitch are crazy. They make someone mad. Okay, anyway, that's, that's something else. That I should, I should, oof, serenity, poetry, wonderfulness. Um, sorry, I had a little bit of an explosion there. It's been a frustrating week <laughs> in terms of the business side. That's funny. It's there, and you know, Steve, that there's like a whole side, that like, you know, the hours of work that we do to do the art that we do. <laughs> um, this poem, What I Will Remember, is just kind of like the way that my, my writing person described it was it was like um, a bud. It wasn't a flower yet and bloomed as a poem. So we're going to write a, a longer version of it. Um, what I will remember. The nightly video chats. The daily spirit. The willful, a willful ignorance that was a weedy garden with roses in bloom. The way music poured from Italian balconies. The way you never stopped singing. The thousand conversations about quarantines, social distancing, and masks, but seeing all of your eyes smile. The day I traveled to New York, saw my family for the first time since March, a sign saying, I love you. The million little ways we dedicated and mourned the invisible dying, how I suddenly saw you for the first time. Now, I do not claim that to be a finished poem. That's a fragment. And frankly, it's a disturbing fragment in some ways. Like, it doesn't join together. Like, there are parts that I pulled from here and here and here. It was very, like, just how I felt. Um, Leaky says, not bad, but I definitely, again, not a finished poem in my personal opinion. St. Just asks, when did you start to read or write poems? And I would say that I started, well, I mean, <laughs> I started to write I can remember being in grade school writing poems. Um, high school had that angsty crush phase, you know, where like I wrote about unrequited love a lot. Um, and then in college, the way I phrase it, I had a bad run at it. I had a rough time, did not enjoy myself, actually dropped out and then later on finished at a local school from home, but I didn't like going away. And so I poured myself into poetry, wrote tons of poems, filled notebooks with frustrated words. But um, that really taught me a lot about how to use image and, um, and stuff. And then uh, I, from that, I uh, um, kind of, I use that to process. And so there's a lot of conversation with writers about what it's like to process right versus um, uh, write right. So there's processing a challenge, there's processing um, trauma, there's processing frustration, there's processing anger. And that is just as valid as the after the fact writing. But when you're in process, yeah, like Leaky says, I always process. It's two separate types. Um, and some people are in the process and they remain in the process. They might just be dealing with stuff a lot. Um, and the powerful writing comes from that. And then after that, when you've kind of come out of that process, for me, I had a lot of tools in my tool shed and I could start applying them to unique and new situations. Um, it's also one of those things that there's some people that write, they can, they can, they, in, in a way, they're writing what they're dealing with. And they really focus in on that. And that's their stuff. And then there's other people which 
you know, like for me, I love commissions because I get to jump out of myself and do these things. And that was a jump. It was tough at certain points, too, because um, and you can always clean up your writing at the end as well. You can always do the in the editing process, remove uh, some of the things that might make processing. For me, it would be too edgy. Like my processing was very edgy at certain points. I wrote some pretty really dark crap <laughs> during that time. Really, really dark. But now I don't write as much dark poetry. I, I sometimes do, but not always. I think that's a good segue to try to get into a poem about the pandemic. So we're going to bring back our music, which has been gone for a long time. Um, no, that's not good for this. That's just good. Um, I like that. This one's good. Welcome. It's WAP. Did you enjoy Shakespeare? If so, what can you recommend to me as a first step? Shakespeare requires, for me, Shakespeare requires a really good actor to interpolate. That's my, my take on Shakespeare. Um, I mean, I've read Shakespeare and I've been able to interpret, interpret him, but like, it's funny because if you just read Shakespeare straight, it's very hard. It's, just, it's a very, very much like a, like a big block of words. He's just all big blocks of, you know, I have a pentameter, but like really read it with emotion, like over emote on Shakespeare. Um, if you're reading Shakespeare, if you want to write like Shakespeare, um, I mean, I would, I would definitely read out loud, try to read with that iambic pentameter. Um, man, I haven't done iambic pentameter in a while and try to just practice with it so you get into the rhythm of what words sound like. And the thing that about iambic pentameter, so iambic pentameter, for people that don't know, is, is a style of writing where it's um, trying to, it's a good sonnet. Oh goodness, I know the sonnet. But it's basically like an up, down, up, down, up, down type of rhythm on the, on the, on the syllables. But for me, what was important is breaking the rules occasionally. That you don't have to go so strict. It has to sound kind of nice, but not even Shakespeare's iambic pentameter sonnets are straight iambic pentameter. There might be a syllable here, there might be a um, a rhythm that goes up instead of down here and there, uh, and then just having fun with it. That's on the writing side. So on reading Shakespeare, over-emotionalize so that, you know, you can understand the humanity of the characters and how they can speak in verse and yet be superhuman about it. And one of these days we could do that on the stream. And then on the writing side of Shakespeare and iambic pentameter, um, just being comfortable with the rhythm. Um, and and Leakey's right that you have to study the language from the time period. Footnotes are helpful. <laughs> Footnotes are very helpful. But the funny thing is that you'll see him say things and you'll be like, wait, like, what does he say? That sounds so modern. And it's because he said it first. <laughs> he said, like, you know, some things that we take as as common figures of speech came from the annals of um, Shakespeare.
Yeah, I frankly, Leaky, I'm I'm writing this. I I don't know if I'm going to even be satisfied with what I come out with today. I'm I still there's a soul of it that I I need to find. And what I'm going to try doing today is that my my writing coach suggested that there are three elements at play here. Um, and it's that there's the world according to the pandemic, what I will remember. Then there's the speaker and there's you, um, which is kind of like a, you know, how did I feel and how did the other feel? And so I'm going to try to flow in that order. So starting with the things we all identify, then going kind of into the heart, which is something we still all identify with, but is going to be kind of me talking. And then how did it feel like seeing other people through that? A sadness in the eyes behind the masks. I may use that. Um, there's also joy. Like, I love seeing people's eyes smile. I really do. And I love that line in the original. But there is indeed also a sadness. Kind of like a, um, a reservedness. Like, you know, there's a lack of connection. Um, do you mean break free, Leaky? <laughs> I see you say feel free. Um, but yes, it, there's... The masks and the theme of masks and unmasking was something that actually happened a lot in a lot of my street poems. Um, so in case anybody didn't know that's tuning in that's seeing me for the first time, um, I do poems on the street. And so I will usually write, I can write poems. Um, oh, feel free to use it. But uh, yeah, that's, there's something to that too. But um, the um, I write poems on the street like five minutes uh, you give me a topic, and that's my that's what I usually do. That's my regular thing. This is not even my regular thing. Um, if you are watching and you're watching me for the first time, if you would um, be so kind as to potentially consider following me, I do stream every morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I also have um, a, uh, a repair stream that I will be starting again soon. Um, and I eventually will be able to accept subscribers and bits once Twitch stops being a jerk. It's, um, the poem has gone a different direction. thinking through. My, um, 
uh, my wife has suggested that I do um, typewriter ASMR on the ASMR t uh, channels. Uh, maybe if I have like a long work, like if I'm just gonna be typing for hours, I could do that. I talk too much to do ASMR. So yeah, because like, I don't even know what ASMR really is. Like I've kind of, like I've heard of it and I've done like, um, like I've, I've heard of it a little bit. So it would just be, it would be me writing and whispering. It would be a thing. And then, and there would be no music. So this is, this is what it would, this would be, it would be, it would be, um, I'm gonna turn that down, it would be. I'm gonna bring back the music because I can't, I can't joke around with a poem like this. It's a, it's, it's getting into some pretty serious territory. Um, <laughs> so I think I, I so so Leaky has as has confirmed that either my typewriter ASMR will be hilarious or it will be actually effective. <laughs> I can't tell if it's both. Um, I listened to the song, um, to bits and pieces of the song, read a little bit of the lyrics. I know that you wrote a little earlier that. Um, there we go, both. Uh, I know you wrote, read a little, wrote a little earlier that um, you felt it was vague, and I think that that's something that is really author's choice. Um, I really, you know, but the thing is, is if it's vague, then you have to be ready for it to be interpreted many different ways, which was funny. Like, I, my, my writing um, coach, I um, sent him a poem that was intended to be about, it was actually a reinterpretation of Dover Beach. The Waves poem. And he looked at it and he said, wow, you've written a great poem about climate change. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't intend to. Like, not that that's bad interpretation either way. Um, but it's more that if you don't, you know, you might, you might have people, and that happens with any work of art. You can write a poem which is perfect at saying this and that. And then it totally just goes left and right. But if you're, you know, you're comfortable with the interpretation being vague, what happens is then your poem can apply for many situations. You can say, well, it's about the pandemic, but it's also about 
you know, missing people and, and things like that. And I, I, I got to go back and read the lyrics in more detail to that song. And we can maybe even read them over the stream. But um, we're getting to some pretty serious points here in the poem here. So I want to make sure I get this right. I just want the direction. Alright. So this was a little, it was disjointed, but it kind of, um, I think I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's still disjointed. It still has a long way to go. Um, what I will remember, the news, the press conferences and closings, shock and awe as we ran to the grocery store, Assembled belongings for weeks that transformed into months like decades. I heard music pouring from Italian balconies. Saw my family through Zoom on my birthday through tears. Hid behind the mask what I couldn't say, how I saw my father and mother differently. Recalled ages of friends with fine accuracy. Peered in between the lines for the lives of the invisible dying began the Angelus, agonized over my foolishness, sought the conversations for substance and cried, cried in the grocery store, cried in the parking lots, and when we reunited on the streets, when I traveled back to New York after two months, and you were alive, you are alive, we are still alive, remembering. That was good. Um, I'm already making some notes. But that is at least... Um, <laughs> Leaky says, okay, that is so much better. <laughs> yes, still I feel like... I, I, part of it is also like... And it's funny because when the other poems he's having me edit, which I didn't get to work on this morning, we asked a question like, what do we want in the poem? You know, like, what is the, what do I want to say in it? And sometimes I can't even decide. I just write something. And it's like, well, this is how I feel. You know, it's a, it doesn't have intention to it. And then like, you kind of want to either ascribe intention, but yes, it feels like something is still missing. But it is, at least it has like, I feel like now it's focused. Now it's more like I can work through this and find the missing piece as opposed to what is this random fragment I've written? Well, this has been awesome to be on here with you all. Um, thank you for everybody that tuned in. Again, if you would uh, be so kind as to follow, 
Ashes of Authority, thank you so much for the follow. You just caught me at the end of my stream. Um, so sorry, but yeah. Um, this has been really awesome to be able to be here. Um, and thank you so much again, Claire, for being here. Now, for those in the stream, we are going to um, do a warp speed transportation to one of my favorite DJs, Akira the Don, who does the um, music that I overlay on my stream. Um, and thank you so much, Saint, for being here and everybody. So we're going to do a raid, small raid, uh, just over to Akira the Don, uh, DJ extraordinaire. Uh, who is currently doing um, 80s, and currently he has um, that song about, oh, I can't remember the name of the song, but um, it's great. Um, yes, and if you are so inclined, my Instagram is also, I can do this, down here, right there, you can see my Instagram, and my email is yourfriend at com. I'm going to drop it again in the chat, feel free, if you want to get... Um, hard copies of anything I've written today, you can email me there. All right. We're going to do the raid. Thank you again so much, everybody, for tuning in, and I'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. EST for more poetry. I will definitely uh, read those lyrics on, on Leaky on that. All right. Here we go. Great to talk to you, everybody. And, oh, now we got 10 seconds. Countdown to five, four, three, two, 